right, guys. So this is really, really exciting for me. Um, I've been in the train chasing world for about 10 years now. Um, started chasing 2017, roughly. I've been a rail fan long before that, since like 2011. So, ever since I started chasing, there have been a lot of interesting and cool uh, experiences that I've had, good and bad. Um, and uh, my good friend Aubrey, who you'll also see in the video, um, he has been along the ride for a lot of it, so uh, we thought it'd be cool to put together a little video. Now, what you all are going to see in this video is not only the train, of course, that's, it's a real fanning video. You all are going to see everything. All of the cursing, all of the swearing, all of the, the sheets runs, getting gas, uh, just laughing, yelling at each other, all of that. Y'all are going to see everything. So without further ado, here you go. Many times along the way, I've been asked why I chase trains and why I film trains. Answer is simple. The chase is better than the catch. A lot of times the trip to see a special train like 12R here with the 8114 heritage unit leading is more enjoyable than the train itself. This was five in the morning. I woke up, he was right on me. So I ended up, you know, hauling freight up to the B line, which you'll see a lot of in this video. Another fun trip was here down in Stanton, Virginia on the Shenandoah Valley Railroad. They use a lot of old engines from the 50s and fortunately they were running their old Alco this morning and this was cold. I mean to tell you, this was about 20 degrees and didn't get much higher than that all day. And a lot of people don't realize when train chasing what you see is a whole lot of this it is a ton of driving a lot of times we will drive upwards of two and a half hours just to see you know something special and Aubrey who you'll meet here in a second um, he and I have done some crazy long distances for train stuff and a lot of times, if you film everything, you get a lot of bloopers like this. Oh, you're... How the f*** do you mess that up? Bro, really? How the f*** do you mess that up? <laughs> I'll move. I know, I'll move it. Uh, that's going to wrap up our night, so uh, thank you all for... Nope, I didn't... Change, damn it. Why are you taking so long? Damn it. Yeah, they're they're creeping up. They're creeping up to us here, so might need to scoot ahead a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna have to scoot ahead. Because they're coming up into the curve now. And the gates are gonna hit any second. I think. Now they slowed down again. This might work. Yeah, it's not going to work. As you can see by the several instances of cursing by both Aubrey and myself, chases don't always go according to plan. 
especially when you're chasing a 60 mile an hour intermodal like 203. He has bit us in the ass many times. Believe me. All too often, we underestimate the speed of the trains we're chasing. And this happens. <laughs> Sometimes you make poor judgment Here. calls. Yeah, this was a waste. All right, let him go through and then we'll about face and then head back. We want to pick up over? Yeah, yeah, just about face and head back. That's gonna be the best, best scenario here. Bad judgment call, that's my bad. These next few clips show what happens when your timing is a little bit off. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, you ready? Son of a All right, All right let's roll out of here. You got space. Damn it. I'll just let Amtrak tell you what happens when you're not paying attention. We didn't quite time this right. Train chasing can be like fishing. Sometimes all you have is luck. And sometimes that pays off big time. Since I've been train chasing serious? so long, I have a phrase that I often use when something pops up out of nowhere. And that is on today's episode of Where the Hell Did That Come From?
But most of the time, you shoot the same damn the thing you've seen a hundred times side. before. Either way, it's worth it. And every single time, you have a blast. And it's 2.03. Scanners are by far the most useful tool in train chasing. Over the radio, crews will call out signals. They'll talk to the dispatcher about future moves. They'll talk to other trains. You can hear almost anything on it. What you just heard was a Take defect in. detector. Now, these are all over Norfolk Southern, and they're set so many miles apart, but what they do is they measure wheel temperature, if anything's dragging, you know, that kind of stuff. Just making sure the train's running smoothly. And what you're hearing now is a wayside crew member talking to 203 about it, trying to figure out when they're gonna stop, where they're gonna stop, and you know yes, what to do from there. Now we're about five miles from the double track where we had planned to stop. Got the train master waiting there to uh, jock us around. We would be alright to make it. Another up. really cool thing that I've seen yeah, crews do is that. when they are stopped or passing another train, they'll actually inspect the other trains as it's going by. So they'll let them know if they got anything dragging, anything smoking, anything like that. It's pretty cool. All right, we will get back to you. ATCS is also a very valuable tool while train chasing. Now, non-rail fans can't make heads or tails of what's on your screen. But to us rail fans and train chasers, it tells us exactly where the trains are. Now, this map in particular shows Hagerstown all the way down to Lynchburg and Roanoke. And those are usually the lines that we chase. So, being able to see where those trains are and where they're lined can be incredibly useful on the chase. I always have mine running and have an app on my phone where I can see my computer screen. So, wherever I am, as long as I have service, I can see where they're at. Two-way radios are incredibly useful on chases, uh, especially when you have multiple cars in a chase. Like when we were up in Pennsylvania, for example, um, Daniel and Jackson were leading the chase. Me, Aubrey, Carter, and Jacoby were in the car behind them. And since they had the scanner, they were letting us know everything that was going on. And for example, here, you know, Aubrey and I are talking back and forth just trying to figure out what the plan is letting each other know what's up ahead especially police um and they can just be incredibly useful in between vehicles all right guys so real quick i wanted to go through my camera gear now it's in this little um little book bag up here i got all my cleaning supplies my uh hard drives and everything are in there but anyway in here, there's some manuals and uh, lens filters, 
and then my SD cards. Anyway, so in here is all my camera gear. Now this, I have stuff for every situation. So if it's at night, I have my external flashes and I got two of those. Um, I have some vintage Nikon lenses that I use. So for instance, this guy here is a 35 to 70. Now this one I usually use at night because the aperture is manual. Now the aperture, all that is, is how much light gets into the lens. So with that and this 70 to 10 here, the big boy, um, with those, I can adjust the aperture manually. So at night I can, I usually use those at night with the flashes. Um, this guy here is interesting. This is what we call a mirror lens. Now, this is used primarily for like really up close photography. So like tiny, tiny things. Um, I've used it for some long range stuff. It just zooms in a little too far. Um, here are the Canon lenses that I use. This one's an 18 to 55. So this is kind of a universal, you know, does anything lens. This is another big boy. This is 75 to 300. So this is what I call the long lens. And uh, that I'll use for like long distance sweeping curve shots, you know, to get up close to the engines, all that kind of stuff. Now, the camera I use, I've been using this one for about a year and a half now. It is a Canon Rebel T7. Now, this is a really awesome camera. It does everything. It's really nice. And then uh, I got to start getting back into it. But I have an old Canon Vixia hfr 700 now this one has a lot of hours on it uh back when i would chase stuff yeah you know, that that would be always on so i have about 30 hours worth of train stuff just on this camera not my old ones um, but anyway this is the whole rig that i'm using now uh, and there are a couple other things i'll get to later but this is everything i use currently some of the images that I'm going to put in here, I'm only going to add a couple because uh, all of the rest are on my Instagram. But some of the images that I'm going to add here are just an example of the kind of shots that we get. And uh, my good friend Daniel, he was the one that explained to me that it's about the scene, not just the train. And I've really taken that to heart recently with a lot of the shots I've gotten. One other thing I want to mention real quick in the uh, train chasing world is what we like to call head-end power. Now, all it is is just simply a power inverter. Right now I have it running a uh, wireless charger up here and then a little mini fridge in the back. But basically this can power, you know, computers, anything with a 120 outlet. So a lot of times if I have to bring the ATCS with me, it'll be on that.
The hobby of rail fanning, train chasing, uh, being a train enthusiast has been around in my life uh, pretty, since, pretty much since I was two. Um, I just fell over the hobby um, after my parents got me a little uh, wooden Thomas train set um, when I was a kid and it's just grown ever since. Uh, train chasing is um, thrilling, it's adventurous, you know, it's really fun, you get to meet all kinds of people and um, it's it's just adrenal, adrenaline pumping, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. Um, Kind of like you're being in charge of your own mission, uh, trying to ca- go out and see what you can catch. You know, it's like an exciting version of hunting that requires a lot of gas, money, snacks, and uh, equipment um, in order to chase trains. And uh, that's why I like the hobby itself. What also makes the hobby is most of the people that I've met. Most of the people that I've met in life um, are the ones who have built this hobby of mine um personally um to what it is now to where now i have a full-blown career in it and if it wasn't for you know just my interest in the railroad uh, i don't know where i would be right now um doing what i do but yeah this is an amazing hobby um just for the adventure, the the challenges you seek, um, just the thrill that you can make it as well as others can make it, um, and just all the adventures that you can go, and just how, so much that this hobby can do for somebody um, and for other people as well, and that's what brings everybody uh, close together. Um, well, most of everybody close together, and uh, that's another reason why I like this hobby as well. So. I've been doing this for about three years now. I started in uh, October of 2018, when, which is when I really started doing this seriously. Um, and I met Trevor in uh, 2020 by complete accident. Um, he knows. Um, I guess I could say what really got me into this was I had some extended family who worked for the Southern when it was still Southern Railway. And uh, it's probably been said 1,500 times, but I was one of those kids who grew up watching Thomas the Tank Engine when it was still all models. Um, and I guess the things that I really enjoy about it is um, going to see new places like we did today. And uh, I guess just meet all these new people that uh, you can take advice from and you know you can talk to this, you can shoot the breeze with them for however long you want to. So. I think that's why I enjoy it, and uh, just the variety of things you'll find out here is just incredible. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. That's good. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's Jacoby Johnson, also known as BHJ Rail Fan. Um, originally, I started train chasing. Well, let me not say train chasing, but rail fanning about uh, eight years ago. And I recently started chasing, train chasing about three years ago. And my favorite thing about train chasing is that the excitement while in the moment of chasing, like it's the on the go, uh, we got to get you know to this spot <laughs> um, before we miss it or where we're going to go for the next spot in order to catch it and get a nice shot. Um, and it's really a uh, good experience, especially, you know, being amongst other rail fans, such as uh, Kettle Run Rail Fan, which is Aubrey, um, Trevor, Trevor Brown, um, and Jackson, a Piedmont District Rail Fan. And it's, as long as I've done it with those amount of people, uh, well, especially those people, I realized that it's, it gets more fun each time, no matter where we go, whether if it's local or we're out of state. And because it's just like, it's a, it's like we're all brothers, you know, just having a good time. And, you know, that's just the, the good part about, you know, train chasing. I do hopefully, you know, want to, you know, have more um, opportunities where we're just like, it's, uh, all day thing and it's just like oh we're, we're gonna chase this for about a couple hours and call it a day but um other than that 
I just really love chase train chasing for the most part. I think it, it brings out the uh, more fun of rail fanning rather than just sitting at one location and um, waiting hours and hours and getting the same shot at one place where you can get multiple shots chasing it with different people who do the same thing as you. But um, that is my response to um, the questions that um, Trevor had asked me for this documentary. Um, to check out more of my content, I am BSJ Rail Fanning and Modeling on YouTube and Instagram. I also have a Facebook page, which is the same name, BSJ Rail Fanning and Modeling. But um, like always, keep the chase alive. For whatever reason we do it, the promise of a new adventure, always seeing something different, the adrenaline rush, getting that perfect picture or video. For whatever reason we chase trains, it's all about the experience. You've heard from everybody else, but now let me tell you my story. I got into this when I was about 11 years old, got my first train DVD set, just about wore those DVDs out. And when I was a little kid, you know, I played with Thomas like every little boy does. But anyway, uh, when I was 12, I got my first video camera and that's where the ball started rolling. And my mom, uh, fortunately, she worked right next to railroad tracks up in Noakesville. So I would go up there whenever I had a day off of school or, you know, for whatever reason. During the summer, I'd go up and mow the lawn. So I always had an excuse to be next to railroad tracks. And I would film everything. On that old camera, I have about 40 hours of video of all the stuff that's just gone. You know, scrap, sold off, stuff you can't see anymore. Well, in 2017, I got my license, and that's when the chasing started. First train I chased was 228, and it had a Kansas City Southern engine trailing. First time I've ever seen one of those. And ever since then, it's just been a constant chase. You know, I got into it with the ATCS and the radios and all that kind of stuff. And for the longest time, I didn't know anybody else chased trains until I met, you know, a couple older guys in Noakesville that did it and then got introduced to the train group with Aubrey, Ryan, and all of them. And ever since then, you know, my photography's taken off. I've uh, started, you know, editing YouTube videos like this, and, yeah, it's just, it's been a great experience, and a lot of times when I go chasing, I always have some key memory that I take back from it. So, for instance, this video here, this is the first time I'd ever used um, spotlights. The crew hated me for it, but they had stopped for, I believe, an Amtrak to pass, and they just fired up very slowly out of that little hole that they were in, and the noise was just incredible. I'm never gonna forget that. The biggest question I get asked is, why do you do it? Why do you drive 60 miles just to see a train? Well, the reason is simple. The adrenaline rush you get from trying to set everything up perfectly in a split second is unlike anything else I've ever experienced. I'll set the stage for you. There's a train coming. You can see the headlight coming down the hill at Calverton. You're over here at Midland. There's a crossing just up the road. Once you hear that horn blowing, you got about 30 seconds to get everything perfect. 
to make sure your camera is on, all the settings are correct, the lighting is correct. Make sure your camcorder is going. Make sure the car is unlocked and facing the right way. All of this has to be perfect within 30 seconds. Then once that train comes into view, everything stands still. Your only focus is that one train. Sometimes the video doesn't record. Sometimes the flashes don't go off. Sometimes your angle's just not good. Well, there's always the next part of the chase. You get on the road, you load the car up as fast as you can. You speed out and go as fast as you can legally go down to the next spot. Once you're there, the same thing. You got 30 seconds to set up. This time, you have the lighting set perfect. The camcorder's going early. Your car is faced exactly where you want it to be. The train comes into view. You snap your picture. And you can't wait to show all your friends that you got the most beautiful picture you've ever gotten. You've gotten the perfect video of something that could be gone tomorrow, could last another 50 years, but you have no way of telling. That's why we do it. We do it to keep information alive. For instance, that old engine 3306 that's in front of you. It's an old SD40-2 that came from the Southern Railway. The Southern Railway has been gone for 40 plus years. And we all look to preserve that information. Right here, the Southern Heritage Unit crosses Linden with my questionable video skills. On a Southern line. This chase, we had about 40 people chasing with us. It was insane. Other times, it's just me by myself. While that sounds unappealing, sometimes having time to myself to set everything up perfectly and figure out what I want to do with the shot is all I need. But I don't forget the other people that do it. I don't forget the other chasers that are out there. Ones who will help me with advice. Ones that will track stuff for me like 13R here. And ones that are always up for a chase. I don't forget those people. People are the reason we do this. Along our many chases on the high iron, we've found people that have the same interest, the same goal. We found people to share oh our too. experiences with, to share our photos and videos with, to give us feedback, and to join us on chases. The beauty with the hobby is the challenge. Always trying to perfect your skills, get a better picture, get a different angle, a better video. There's always something. The weather, traffic, lighting, all that kind of stuff. You never know how a chase is gonna go. You could get sidetracked halfway, another train with something different, something better, could come the opposite direction, and you have to completely bail on your plans. Well, that's all part of the experience. That's why we do it. That's enough talking from me. I'll let y'all enjoy the last couple shots. Anyway. My name is Trevor Joseph, I'm a train chaser, and you've seen why we run like hell.
<laughs> oh yeah, boys. Three in a row. Fifty-two That's new. train because they might have to jog the VRE up to a crossover. Yeah, here we go. Dude, look at this. Yo! That's awesome! Yo! <laughs> 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 Send that to me. <laughs> oh my god. Send that to me. Oh, god. oh man. <laughs> Yo, send that to me. Baba Boy. Yeah, I'm at, uh, I'm at the upper end of Remington. I'm trying to get a bird. Oh <laughs>